السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بكم جميعا الحضور والمنظمين والمتحدثين معكم أخوكم سالم العطوة آه زي ما تكلم الدكتور عبد الله my part will be about uh, 20 minutes in this part we will talk about the MRI safety regarding the main parts of MRI system which is the main magnet B note and the gradient magnetic field DB slash DT and the radio frequency B1. We will also talk about the basic concept of each part, the hazards of each part and how to prevent the hazard associated with each part. واضح الصوت؟ اي واضح نعم نعم واضح توكل الله ال ذس ال 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 البوينت اللي بتكلم عنها والانكلود ريكومنديشن اند جايد لاينز اوبتيند فروم ذا ليتست ريفيو ليتريتشر فروم ذا اف دي اي ذا اي اس ام ار ام ذا اي سي ار اند اذر اورجانيزيشن بيفور وي ستارت ليتس سي سم اكزامبل اوف ام ار اي اكسيدنت ذات هاز هابند بيكوز ام بروبر يوز اور اور بيبل نوت complying or applying the MRI safety recommendation. Here is a huge bed hospital held by a magnet, and here is a cleaning machine, and here is an IV stand. Here is also a piece of proof. And here is also a piece of newspaper where there is a sad news, sad trail of tears from MRI kit. A kid died in MRI scanner. Excellent. Okay, and here is another example of a death link to a, uh, an MRI scanner as well. A patient with pacemaker undergoes an MRI scanner and died in the MRI machine. Okay, after seeing uh, some example, this only some example, what do you guys think? Is MRI always dangerous? Well, the answer would be no if we follow safety procedure and recommendation. However, if we don't, a serious and fatal injuries can occur. Okay, let's discuss the basic part of MRI system before we move forward to identify the hazards. Okay, if we see the images, if we see from inside closer to the patient, there is the, radi the radio frequency coil, then the gradient coil, then the magnet coil. These are the three essential parts of operating the MRI system, and each part will provide a different, a different electromagnetic field. The first field will be the static magnetic field, B0. The second field will be the gradient or changing magnetic field, DB, uh, DT. The third one will be the radio frequency field, which is B1. Okay, it's very important to note that each part has its own hazard that is different than the hazard with the other part. And we will discuss each one separately. Okay, let's start with part number one. The main magnetic field, which is the static magnetic field. Okay, how it is produced? Before we explain the hazard associated with B0, we will move briefly to understand how it is produced. Uh, Firstly, it is characterized by Gauss or Tesla, which is the international standard unit to measure the magnetic flux or density. Tesla is the bigger unit, whereas the Gauss is the smaller unit. Uh, uh, one Tesla, it's very understand the relationship. One Tesla is equal to 10,000 Gauss. And for example, if you if you have a 
1.5 Tesla scanner in your hospital, that means to 15,000 Gauss. And to understand how strong is the magnetic field we are working with, uh, we will compare it with a magnetic field that we feel. Uh, for example, a standard refrigerator will have a magnetic field of 100 Gauss. Another example is the magnetic field of the Earth, which is only 0.5 Gauss. Okay, what does that mean? Let us assume you have a MRI system that is 1.5 Tesla in your hospital, which is 15,000 Gauss. This means that you are dealing with a magnetic field that is 30,000 times stronger than the magnetic field of the Earth. Okay, let's see the next, what does that mean? Okay, let's see the next step, which is how can we produce a such a strong magnetic field. It can be produced by a phenomenon called superconductivity. And how can we produce superconductivity is by calling down an electrical conductor to a very, to a very low uh, temperature, which is about minus 275. For example, in our MRI, we use a specific materials or alloy uh, that is called down to a minus 273 by using a, a helium liquid. And then, and what happened next is uh, we, after we cool it down, we will energize it by electrical current. And then after removing the power supply, the electrical current will circulate without voltage. So we have a superconductor that is called down to almost minus 275. And there is electrical current that is circulating without any supply. What we understand from this, we understand a very critical points regarding MRI safety. First one is that MRI magnetic field is always on. It's nothing to switch on and off. And the second important point is that to remove the magnetic field, we need to fend, we need to fend the magnetic field, which is called a quench. And this process is very costly and might damage the magnet. And there can be a significant safety issue relating to a quench and helium liquid, but it's beyond the scope of this course. Mm -hmm. Next. After we, after the magnetic field is produced, it is, it will be in every direction. It will be above, below, right, left, and around the scanner. And this is what called the fringe field, where the magnetic field is the maximum in the isocenter and decrease with distance. Uh, and of the particular importance in the fringe field is the five Gauss line. The location of five Gauss line must be within an area that is defined and controlled to access. For example, if we have a 1.5 Tesla machine, the, one point, the, the five Gauss line will be about four to 4.5 meters in the Z axis. Uh, also, it will depend on the vendor. It is, it's different from vendor to another. It is uh, also, it will depend on the amount of active shielding. Okay, now, what are the hazards associated with B0? There are two, known or two main hazards associated with B0. These are the missile or projectile effect, and the other one is dysfunction or attraction effect on magnetic devices and implant. The first one, which is the missile or projectile effect. It is a fringe field attracting a ferromagnetic object. It draws it rapidly with a considerable force, and the object will become a projectile or missile. It's very important to remember that the magnet is always on. Okay, 
an object's potential to become projectile of metal and how magnetic it is it will also depend on the size weight and shape of the object and here are some examples that happened because of missile effect as we see before and here is the fatal accident that has happened an oxygen tank was pulled by MRI scanner to, the, to a head of six years uh, boy and the second hazard is, is the dysfunction the dysfunction and attraction effect on the magnetic devices as we have seen the magnetic field is changing over distance and that might cause torque or attraction force which might might damage medical devices or implants which will also might result in a dysfunction of the device okay how we can prevent the missile effect first of all we need to undergo mri safety training we need also to review mri safety policies and the procedure we need to understand that a powerful magnetic field is always on we need also to control the access to mri unit and transport patient using approved equipment and no magnetic or dangerous object concealed on the transport equipment and undergo screening before entering MRI environment screening is very important screening 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 screen the patient screen the colleague screen the watcher screen the nurse screen the doctor screen anyone who need to be inside or around the MRI environment and to prevent that we need uh, to take only items that are specialized for MRI and should be labeled non-magnetic or MRI safe or conditional and for transportation we should use only the specially designed equipment okay now we finished with the first part which is B0 and the two associated hazard and how to prevent it now we go to number two which is the gradient magnetic field dbdt what are the changing magnetic field and what are the risk associated with magnetic field okay magnetic field are three sets of coil that uh, and, and each set can create a magnetic field in a specific direction z x or Y that are used for specially encoding and data acquisition. What are the risks associated with changing magnetic field? There are two main risks. The first one is BNS and the second one is acoustic noise. So what is BNS? BNS is the peripheral nerve st stimulation in which an electrical current might be induced through body tissue that might stimulate nerves and how this can happen let's go to the next slide okay faraday's law of induction that state a changing magnetic field induce electrical currents in any conducting medium in our situation we have the human body where the nerves the blood vessels and muscles can act as conductors uh, within the changing magnetic field the nerve can be stimulated and involuntary muscle contractions and light flash in the eye can happen uh, the effect of pns is greater in the peripheral tissue as the gradient amplitude are greater away from the other center uh, there are factors that affecting the stimulation which are the peak of a gradient the diameter and the tissue sensitivity and other factor in general the faster the gradient the more likely it will induce uh, stimulation how can we avoid it uh, by keeping hands from touching like, like breaking the circuit we will decrease the potential for inducing the stimulation okay now hazard with the changing magnetic field is the acoustic noise 
uh, the acoustic noise is the acoustic noise is caused by what we call Lorentz force that are produced due to a motion of a gradient coil within the intense static field B0. It's like a, a changing magnetic field is trying to escape the huge magnetic field. This will produce the huge noise. Uh, the noise in, in, in MRI, in, in a typical MRI sequences, has reported to reach uh, about 82 to 93 decibel. It has been also reco recorded to reach about uh, 114 in a 3 Tesla using ABI sequences. This is a huge noise. And the noise also will depend on the field strength, the pulse sequences, the imaging parameters, and the physical feature of the scanner and environment. So what are the hazards associated with the acoustic noise? It will cause annoyance, anxiety, and communication, difficulty in communication. It might, be, it might cause also hearing damage in extreme cases. And how come we prevent it is by using a hearing protection, earplugs and headphones or both, all patients and volunteers should be offered and encouraged to use hearing protection before undergoing any imaging in MRI scanner. Okay, now we will we uh, will move to the third part, which is the radio frequency B1. What is the radio frequency wave? It is an electromagnetic energy in the range from zero to three thousand gigahertz. It is a non-ionizing electromagnetic wave, and it is used during MRI to excite the proton in order to have signal and create the image. Uh, this excitation is happened by energy exchange between the subject tissue and RF. Okay, now we will see uh, a full electromagnetic spectrum just to see where we are compared with, uh, with other electromagnetic waves used in the other radiology modality. If we see in the beginning, if we If we see here in the beginning of the spectrum, we are in the range from zero to 3000 megahertz, which is in the range of the radio waves, the waves that are used in our TV and in our cell phones and in our radio, uh, which means it is safe in regard to, 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 to ionizing effect. However, there is another hazard related to RF used in MRI scanner. Let's see in the next slide. There are two hazards associated with B1. The first one is local, local whole body heating, which is diffuse heating, or the burns, which is the uh, local heating. And why the RF can lead to heating of the tissue? Because most of the RF energy is transferred to a heat, uh, about 90%. The RF deposition also will depend on the frequency used, the type of RF pulse sequence, the body wave, the TR, the type of RF transmit coil, also the strength of the B naught and other factors. How to avoid the diffuse heating? Uh, well, the vast majority of the system operating with the guideline that will typically not deposit excessive RF power level and nor produce substantial tissue temperature. And these this are the, the second risk associated with B1, which are the burns. Here is an example. This is another example on a child. And here is also an example, a bear on a fresh uh, tattoo. How can burn happen in MRI? 
also well it, it can happen because of several reasons uh, there is a presence of conductive material that are in direct contact with the patient also certain implant and devices or accessories uh, in contact with the patient implants and devices that have elongated shape or form a closed loop uh, also it can happen if the patient tissue is touching the board it is also very important that, uh, uh, that even if we are operating within the recommended uh, the pain might happen how can we prevent burn from happening in MRI. First of all, screen the patient. First, we need to screen the patient. Second, we need second, we need to visit the patient to prevent the skin to skin contact. Uh, for example, do not allow your patient to cross ankle or clasp hands, uh, hands resting on thigh. Also, we need to ensure that the patient skin that does not touch the bore of the magnet or the transmit RF coil. Uh, also, we need to remove all non-essential conductive materials from the bore. And we need to make sure that all electrically conductive devices, equipment, and accessories need to be MRI compatible or conditional. Uh, thank you very much for your listening. Now we move to the second part with uh,